The Square Restaurant POS transforms the way modern restaurants operate. In this tutorial, we'll focus on adding and optimizing your food menu. Our first step is to create a new menu. We'll choose the manual option for this demo. Next, you must give your menu a name and choose the location. With the menu created, we can start adding items. Our goal is to build a menu that contains our selected food and drink items and then arrange the buttons on the POS layout to easily access them for checkout. Let's click on Add Item to select any item from our system. It's best to have your food products already in the system before you create the menu. Choosing an item will show the modal where you're able to see and adjust the pricing and category details. You can even set the button color for that specific item. Clicking Save will add that item to your POS home screen. On this next page, you'll see a list of all the items that you've added. We can repeat the process and add more food items to our POS home screen. Just click Add Item and select another one from your list. So far, we've added two specific items to our POS home screen. Let's see how these items appear on the restaurant tablet. Let's switch screens and look at our menu. When we log into our Square Restaurant POS, we're presented with the home screen menu. We can see our menu name and the two items that we just added. You can click on any of the items and perform a normal checkout. We can build our menu and home screen by repeating this process and choosing more items. If you have a lot of menu items, adding each one to the home screen could get messy. A display group is like a folder. You create a group, give it a name, and then add corresponding food items into that group. You can even choose a color for the group to help organize the layout on the home screen and color code your food or drink items. You'll see that it appears on the home page list. Let's create a few different groups for our home screen. The group will have a gray highlight and any added food item within that group will appear below in the white space. If we go back to our tablet and view the home page menu, we'll see the different groups that we just created. Each one is color coded to help the staff quickly find the food groups. For even more organization, you can put groups inside of other groups. We can edit an existing group and use the checkboxes to make it show within another group. This will create a drill down to specific food or drink categories. These same checkboxes are available when we create new groups. Simply choose where you want each group to show. When we return to the restaurant tablet, we can see the nested groups. Clicking on one of the groups displays the next set of groups. Now that we have some display groups, let's add items and put them within each of the groups. We can see that the display groups are now available during the add item step. Simply use the checkboxes to select the location for each of the items. Let's repeat this process and add more items to our menu. We'll choose different food items and add them to the various display groups to fill out our menu. Let's return to our POS tablet and see the layout of our menu. We've created a well-organized layout for our staff members. This will help increase efficiency during the busy checkout process. You can further customize your layout using the grid editor. Click on this section to see the grid layout of your POS home screen. You can simply drag and drop the tiles to rearrange your layout. Simply click and move each button to the desired location. Click Save when you're done editing. If we go back to our tablet, we can instantly see the new homepage configuration. This page will match the layout that we just edited. The grid and layout options also let you set the size of the buttons. You can choose from a wide, small, or tall layout for all of your items. Another useful option 
is to create multiple pages within your layout. This lets you move groups and items to their own page. Using the plus icon within each square, we can quickly add a new item to that location on the new page. You can quickly and easily build your new layout and move items between pages. When we return to our tablet home screen, our new layout and pages are quickly accessible. By swiping up or down on the tablet, we can switch between the available pages. The next important feature is to create a modifier. This lets you create options for each menu item that can then be selected during checkout. We start by giving the modifier a name. This will be visible to your staff members from within the POS. Now we can start entering each unique modifier that belongs to the set. Enter the name and price for each of these choices. The price will be added to the total for each of the selections. Complete your set and click Save. We have our first modifier set. We can repeat the process and create additional modifiers for the various menu items. Let's do that now. Once you have the required modifiers completed, you need to assign them to your items. This allows you to apply the modifier to any item by simply checking the item from the list. You can use the same modifier on multiple items. Let's return to the tablet home screen and click on one of our coffee items that has a milk modifier assigned. We can see that the choices appear as soon as we click the item. We can then simply choose the milk option and update the order with the customer's selection. Some modifiers require a single choice while others can be selected simultaneously. We can control this setting from within the modifier set. For example, let's look at our food option. We want to give the customer a choice to have the muffin heated or not. This is a singular choice, and thus we need to ensure that only one selection can be clicked. Let's say, for example, we create a new modifier for the customer to add flavor options to their drink. We want to allow them to choose more than one. So in this example, we would keep the selector off, thus allowing the staff member to add multiple flavor items during checkout. Back on our POS home screen, when we select our drink, the flavor additions are displayed. We can click on multiple selections and each one is added to the cart. This allows the customer to customize their drink using the different flavor selections. The next important setting for your menu is the item variations. This would be things like the different sizes, like medium and large or other selections. You can easily create the different variations and price adjustments and apply them to each item. Choose the Edit Variations option to start configuring the settings. You'll start by entering the name and price adjustment for each variation. You can add as many of these as needed for your menu items. Simply click Save when you're ready to move on to the next step. Now that your variations are created, we can return to the POS tablet and test our new options. When we click on any item with a variation, we can see the options on the screen. Simply clicking on one of these will add the item to the cart with the correct price. Another useful option is to create multiple menus. You can further organize your items by creating multiple menus and separate layouts. For example, you could move your food and beverage options into their own unique menus. Now, when we return to our tablet home screen, we can switch between the different menus right from the top of the screen. This quickly changes the layout and food items, creating a more organized workspace for your staff. Each menu can have its own unique layout and grid section. You can simply repeat the process to create unique configurations for all of your menus. Integrating your food menu into the Square Restaurant Point of Sale is a step forward 
into efficiency and excellence.